What line of sight is, is that if you have a receiver and a sender, they have to be able to be in range, that's the amount of energy and the link budget, but they also have to be able to see each other from a radio perspective. Be careful, we're talking about radio line of sight, not visual line of sight. In my example here, you see my Christmas tree at the mid-path between the two access points. Well, it may be hiding the access point from view, meaning that from one access point, you don't see the other access point because there's a tree in between. But if it doesn't absorb the energy, then it's not preventing the radio line of sight. In other words, you send signal from one antenna, and the other antenna receives it. So it's like if you were putting an access point in one side of your room, a laptop near it, and you just put a piece of paper between them two. The signal is going to go through the paper. And if you look through the paper, you may not see the laptop, but it's not preventing line of sight. So here, we're talking about objects that, at the frequency of Wi-Fi, prevents the wave of Wi-Fi from getting to the other end. Again, indoor, that matters somehow because the absorption is going to make that you stop having line of sight at some point. Indoor, it's important because there is another phenomenon that plays into the game, and that's called the Fresnel zone from the discoverer of that effect, Mr. Fresnel. And what this gentleman discovered is that when you have an outdoor link, which is point to point, there is this physical line that goes from one antenna to the other. And again, if you don't see, it doesn't matter, but as long as the radio signal goes through, there is line of sight. And then just along that line, there is a volume just around, which is shaped pretty much like a American football or a rugby ball. And that zone is going to also contain some of the energy that you want to transmit from one side to the other. And if you put some obstacles in that zone, it's going to damage the signal as if you were putting obstacle just between the two objects. And Mr. Fenet actually discovered that there are several zones that, you know, he gave some equations so you could calculate them, but that's beyond CCNA. There is the first zone, which is the most important for us, because anything you put in here is going to damage the signal. And then, then around there is another zone, a bit larger, that we call zone 2. And here, actually, if you put some obstacles, it's going to create less echoes, and it's going to make the signal cleaner and stronger in zone 1. And then there is zone 3, where, again, if you put obstacles, you're damaging the signal, zone 4, and, you know, there are many, many zones. But the one that matters to us is zone number 1. That's the main zone. And we say that if you design a point-to-point -point link outdoor, you need to make sure there is radio line of sight. That's one thing. But also that this first Fresnel zone is as much as you can free from obstacles. And typically, we say it has to be at least 60% free from obstacles. So that volume should not contain more than 40% of objects that would be absorbing the signal. That is important if you de deploy outdoor networks. For indoor and in CCNA, we won't bother much more than you having to know what the Fresnel zone is, the first Fresnel zone. But if you deploy a network outdoor, you need to understand the Fresnel zone more, and you need to look up on how you calculate this Fresnel zone. There is an equation that's going to tell you what is the distance from the line between the two antennas that determines that first Fresnel zone, then the second one, etc. But for CCNA, remember, zone 1 is important and 60% free from obstacles is a requirement for quality signal outdoor. Indoor, doesn't matter too much.